Okay, so I got my Paul socks and I got my bike. Now I put the battery in and I'm going to um, put it on my finger. So put it on the finger like this. Now press the little button and see what it says. It says my, just figuring that out. So this is the, um, this bike is kind of cool. I got this from um, a friend for a hundred dollars and it runs great. Oh, look at, see, 98% saturation, which is what I expected because every time I go to the doctor or something, I put one of them on my finger, so it's 98%. But while my wrist is 92% when I sleep, uh, in 4,500 feet altitude, I don't know. Now, it, sea level and it's 94 percent approximately then that makes sense because the oxygen in the air decreases with altitude and with a lower altitude you have better oxygen saturation now your body can equilibrate to the area but mine when i'm at 4500 altitude it's at 92%. Sometimes it goes to 93, sometimes it's 91, like I said. Now that may be related to some kind of sleep problem I have, like when I breathe, like maybe there's some obstruction or mild like sleep apnea or whatever, but um, I don't know. Okay, so my heart rate right now is 101, which is a little high for me, but that's probably the ex all the excitement. Um, now I'm gonna see, this is interesting. So this oximeter, it, it's some um, elite athletes or athletes are beginning to use the pulse ox to help them with their their breathing and how much oxygen they're getting. But when I read the manual about this, it, it says, "Oh, don't you? This may not be accurate if it has it's under a lot of activity." Well, so how are you supposed to use it with athletics? But that's why I'm on the bike, because I figure, okay, I can leave my hand straight. So I'm gonna bike a little bit and see if my oxygen saturation stays the same. Oh no, it's super heavy. My husband used this. Oh, he has it on like super hard. Okay. Oh, now it's at 99%. Come on. I'm going to try to get a quick breath as fast as I can to get myself breathing. 98%! So I'm probably going to need to do this for like an hour. A little harder. Oh, I heard a little beat. Oh no, it's not at 90%! See, this is why I breathe a lot. Now, my heart rate is at 106. Now it went to 96% saturation, 91 heart rate. I don't know why I bounced around, but whatever. Okay, now I'm back to 98% saturation. Now the Fitbit, Versa, it can't tell me this. It can only give an average overnight. Now my heart rate is 131. harder. So that bounce it over. But my oxygen saturation is at 89%. So this is how I run out of oxygen. Because now it's at 87%. And everybody else is getting ahead of me in the event. Then after 30 minutes, then I can catch up. And that's why I do the long events and not short events because I just don't seem to be able to I get tired of my breathing. So now my oxygen is at 90%. My heart rate is only 78. Whether that's accurate, I don't know because the heart rate's really bouncing around it a lot. The 
heart rate is at 108. The saturation is 93. Heart rate is 139. Saturation is 95. After about 30 minutes into an event, I reach a steady state. And I can do it for, I don't know, seven hours. So now it's at 91% saturation. My heart rate is 157. I don't think the heart rate's too accurate on this. This is too bouncing. Oxygen saturation, 92%. Okay, I'm going to stop. That's my little experiment. Please tell me what you think. Oh, and I want to show you off something. Okay. So, those are some of my um, medals. See, I do like events. Okay, see ya.